Hi everyone and welcome, this is the Apostate Prophet. You can say what you want about the Quran, like that it is very boring, barely coherent, severely ignorant, incredibly hateful, disturbingly graphic, exhaustingly repetitive, brutally violent, and plain stupid. But you have to admit one thing. The Quran put a challenge out there 1400 years ago that has remained unbeaten. You will not believe it, but I'm actually so courageous that I want to accept this challenge. I'm so brave. By the way, most of my videos are not monetized, so you can watch them without ads. If you want to tap me on my shoulder for how brave I am, and if you want to support me, you can support me on Patreon or on apostateprofit.com so that I can be even braver and make more brave videos like this one. So I want to take on this challenge of the Quran, and I am very brave, but there is a problem. The reason that nobody has solved this challenge of the Quran is not that this challenge is so big and so difficult, it is that the challenge is very unclear and very incoherent. No one has any idea what the challenge is about, which should not be a surprise because the Quran also happens to be very unclear and very incoherent as we have established. So what can you expect? The Quran has a very big challenge, which is known by its very creative and unpredictable name, the challenge of the Quran. This unbeatable challenge is mentioned in the Quran itself. To produce a book or a chapter like the Quran, or better than the Quran. The claim here is that while some people don't believe that this book came from Allah, nobody can come and produce a book like this, which of course proves that this book did come from Allah. Logic. Islamic logic. The challenge is found in at least five places in the Quran. Here is one example. Or do they say, he invented it? Say, then bring forth a chapter like it, and call upon whomever you can, besides Allah, if you should be truthful. This is basically Allah's version of, do it better if you don't like it. You can't. By the way, if you actually respond to this challenge, then that is blasphemy, and you deserve death. It's a trap. That's how Allah operates, because Allah is the greatest of schemers, planners, deceivers. In fact, recently, a girl in Tunisia created a brief chapter about COVID, which imitates the Quran. It's called Surah Corona. Muslims became very angry and demanded that she be punished, and she was sentenced to six months in jail. Imagine, this book is from Allah. I don't believe you. Of course it is from Allah. If you can, create a chapter like the Quran. Okay, let me try. No! Blasphemy! Lock her up! I have to say something here. I was a Muslim. I was a regular Muslim. I was a very religious Muslim. I'm gladly no longer a Muslim. And I still have absolutely no idea what Muslims mean when they say, if you are so sure that the Quran is wrong, that it is not from Allah, then why don't you produce a book or a chapter like it? In fact, Muslims themselves have no clue what that even means and what they are asking for. They're just saying it because the Quran says it and it tries to make a strange point. What the Quran does is to really respond to those who claim that Muhammad is making up the Quran as he goes. And the Quran angrily challenges them to create something better than the Quran to show that it is not from Allah. The Quran then directly concludes that no one will be able to produce anything better than the Quran and thereby declares that the Quran is indeed from Allah. Wow, it just happens like that. Make your claim, create a challenge, set your own rules, play the challenge by yourself, declare yourself the winner, problem solved. Genius. Islamic logic. The challenge has no guidelines, no standards. Muslims cannot articulate what the challenge is actually about, because the Quran does not articulate it. Is it about the literary aspects of the Quran? Is it about the meaning? Is it about facts that the text conveys or the emotions? You can't make a challenge without communicating what the challenge actually is. No matter who attempts to take the challenge, a Muslim apologist will always come out and declare that this person failed the challenge based on some new standards. Because the challenge is vague and it has no concrete standards. No matter what happens, Muslims can and will always judge you as the loser and always declare that you have not met the challenge and that the Quran, Allah, wins. That's cheating. It's stupid. It's worse than cheating. Allah is the greatest of cheaters. This is why games and competitions, and this is very basic, this is why games and competitions have basic, clearly outlined rules. So that everyone knows what the competition is about, so that no one can move the goalpost. 
Even the structure of the Quran is ridiculous. It has 114 chapters that were completely arbitrarily ordered as it seems. It is practical to have an index to see which topic is on which page in a book. That's a standard. With the Quran, you find numerous completely unrelated topics randomly squashed into chapters and it keeps jumping from topic to topic often without any relation any bridge while you are reading about a specific topic it suddenly starts ranting about something that it already ranted about in the previous two chapters and no one has any idea what's going on let's look at this part of the quran Within a minute, we start with fasting in Ramadan, jump to how Allah is near and we must submit to Allah, then we jump back to having sex in Ramadan, then we quickly mention not exploiting people's wealth, and then swiftly explain that the moon's faces are there so you can tell the time, and in the same verse we suddenly learn that righteousness is not in entering our houses from the back door, and then it says we should fight those who fight us but not exaggerate, and then we should kill them and drive them out from where they drove us out. dude. A book is good if it sticks to the topic, if it has a clear and understandable language, if it is easy to follow. A good book doesn't open a topic and then abruptly end that topic out of nowhere, jump to a completely different topic without explaining the details properly, then again abruptly jump to a different topic that is completely unrelated. A good book is enjoyable to read because it delivers the message properly, without confusing the reader, without making the reader jump around from thought to thought, without losing the reader's attention. The Quran is not enjoyable at all, it is painful to read. In fact, every Muslim knows that it is agonizing to read. I'm sorry, but even as a Muslim I knew this because even religious Muslims tell that to each other. Of course they make up the excuse that it is Satan or that it is your ego which doesn't want you to do the good deed, to read Allah's word. They want you to indulge in other things instead, they don't want you to do the right thing. But those are just very stupid excuses. What is happening is very simple. You simply don't get pleasure out of reading the Quran, which is why you don't want to continue reading it, which is why you don't even want to look at it. In fact, if Muslims are listening, they know exactly what I mean. I challenge them to look at it for themselves. If they have a problem with the things that I'm saying, that I challenge them to sit down and read the Quran and to tell themselves, to convince themselves that it is indeed enjoyable to read that book, that they are reading it with pleasure, with so much joy. Here are some books that are much better than the Quran. Crime and Punishment by Dostoevsky is a brilliant work of art that takes you on a deep psychological journey. Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl is amazing. It's a relatively short book, but it tells you much more about humanity, psychology, and about finding meaning than the Quran ever can. It is very emotionally crushing and hard to take in, not hard to read like the Quran, but it is definitely worth it. Beyond Good and Evil by Nietzsche is an extremely critical book, but so informative, revolutionary about ethics. Better than the Quran's empty attacks with nothing useful to offer except obey Allah to get virgins and free drinks, otherwise you will burn. The Willpower Instinct is a much less known book by Kelly McGonigal. This is personally a book that I loved very much. It taught me more about myself, about humans, than any Islamic book ever has. And many Islamic books are ironically better than the Quran. Shakespeare definitely beats the Quran in poetry. A Muslim poet, Rumi, from Turkey, is much better than the Quran, which is ironic. Harry Potter books are much better and deliver better morals than the Quran. I mean, even Pokemon delivers better morals than the Quran. I read Twilight and it was much more hooking than the Quran. So when I say Twilight is a better story than the Quran, I'm not exaggerating. Humans will never come together and say, the Quran, hands down, best book ever. No one can top that. And that is not because humans are denying the truth, it's because the Quran is a poorly written book. Most importantly, with good books, you actually know what the book is saying, instead of relying on numerous different translations and interpretations which all claim to be the right interpretation of the Quran, and which all fight each other. You know, I wanted to say so much more, but why beat a dead horse? The Quran's challenge is comedic at best, it is stupid, and nobody today would be highly impressed by the Quran if it had not been imposed on civilizations by a barbaric mindset. Civilizations whose descendants today don't even read the book. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to like, to subscribe, and to share. If you don't like this video, then make something better than this video. You can't. 
because this video comes from Allah. I will be back soon. Have a fantastic day and please stay away from Islam.